Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. So I want to ask, is this you, or maybe somebody you know, or maybe it's a a piece of you, but are you dealing with anxiety, maybe some depression? Do you feel that maybe you need to fix some relationships, find better ways to communicate, maybe have a more fulfilling job? If that even resonates slightly with you, we're going to talk about how you can make that change in your life. And if you're just tired of the same old, same old, and you know there's more out there, well, it's all about making that change in your life. And that's through empowering you and through coaching. And I found somebody who does just that. He's a board-certified master life coach, and he joins us today. Dr. John Carney, PhD, is on the program. Hi, John. How are you? Good, Steve. How are you? Fantastic, and it's great to to have you here because even though we're out, we've been you know year year and change out of COVID for the most part. I'm hearing that ever since that period three four years ago, the amount of anxiety that people are dealing with nowadays in in our society has escalated. Same thing with depression. That's what I hear. Are you experiencing that with with your clients, the people you work with? Uh, sure has, Steve. It's like, you know, out of the over, I guess, 3,000 people I've worked with in over 30 years, it has really increased, um, and people feel more disconnected uh, deeply inside as well as outside. And so it kind of tends to leave them more alone, if not spiraling at times, and certainly not equipped uh, to for real growth and um, upward momentum, whatever that means in their life. It, it makes it difficult. Does this encompass our relationships as well when somebody's dealing with anxiety? Oh, absolutely. Excellent question. It, um, it really is, um, you know, who we are inside personally and how much healing we've gotten. And are we connected inside deeply? Do we know what we feel? Are we able to express positively, with healthy assertiveness? Do we have healthy boundaries? All these things are hugely impactful to every single relationship we put our hands to, personally, professionally, um, all the way around. It, um, it, you know, I, I, I work with people a lot that, that come see me and say, John, you know, can you help us learn to love each other better? And I say, well, not really, until, I, you know, we learn to uh, get you to where you can trust easier. Now, well, okay, then, can, John, can you help us trust, trust each other better? And I say, well, not really, except to the degree that you are safe, S-A-F-E. And I mean spiritually, uh, physically, emotionally, mentally, sexually, physically, uh, verbally, and so on. If in your relationship, most intimate relationships, of course, if you feel safe all the way around, and I'm talking even just mentally and emotionally, if nothing else, if you feel safe, genuinely safe with your key significant partner or other, um, then you're going to be able to trust. And that trust goes every direction. And then you're going to finally know what real love is. Makes it a lot easier. Well said. And probably the keys to everything right there in what you said. Um, Wow. Let's go over to codependency, term that comes up a lot. It's sometimes connected with um, anxiety and depression. How how do you define codependency? To some degree, more than what I want, I base my life upon another person's thoughts, feelings, or behavior. Okay. So you need them to move your life forward. That's what it sounds like to me. Right. There is a, um, if we could say, and it could be on any of the different levels, uh, you know, we have 26 different levels in the subconscious, so it could be, that's where our expectors are, right? And then we have the conscious, which is where our desires are. So we come into relationships with expectations that thwart us a lot if we're not, if we haven't taken care of those things and really gone after healing those things. But yeah, codependency it, it can be deeply enmeshed you know, or entangled uh, with situations that we need to know what real assertiveness is to come out of it and get firmer boundaries, a lot firmer boundaries, healthier boundaries. Um, 
and or just our way of thinking, you know, and being able to understand who we are, whose we are, and what we're all about inside and externally. So, yeah, codependency can be a real sneaky thing. It can be huge or it can be very uh, a tiny little snake sneaking around where it just doesn't need to be at all. So, yeah, hmm. it can impact a lot of stuff that's most surprising. John, do you feel that many people who are codependent are, are those that may have uh, maybe separation anxiety, maybe things from their childhood, and that's why they, they you know, I don't want to say latch on to somebody else, but they, they need somebody else, uh, maybe afraid to be alone? You know, Steve, you bring up a really good question there. It's like so much, people don't realize this, but so much of our stuff, I don't care who we are, uh, male, female, uh, no matter what age, you know, uh, generation, um, uh, you know, it, it comes from our first 12 years. It really does. It, it 12, 12 to 14 years, it's so much of it. And so when you talk to a therapist, um, you know, a lot of times if they're going for deeper work, if they're going to really get down to the root, because uh, in my practice I track from fruit to root, and if you can take care of that root stuff, all the other stuff, it's just, you know, it'll take care of itself. It really is a lot of stuff that happens in childhood that we live out in our adult life overcompensating for. Uh, Amen amen to that. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I, that's what I learned in my journey, and the game changer for me was uh, hypnotherapy. And when I met the uh, hypnotherapist, and of course, you know, I was a little uncertain how this is going to work. The first thing I said was, take me back to my childhood. That's where we're going today. And not that I had a bad childhood, but we all have stuff, you know, that, that, yeah. you know, that impacts us. Um, but I knew that that's where I needed to go to confront me as a child and all of that and understand. Um, and, and also the, the feeling of not being good enough, like not worthy enough. I'm guessing mm-hmm. when it comes to, which, which I, as I understand it, it, it's pretty much in all of us, which makes mm-hmm. it sound like you would want to be codependent because two is better than one. You feel stronger with the other person, right? <laughs> well, that's very interesting. So there are, there are several terms here. We've got dependent. So I am dependent upon you, okay, mm-hmm. like a child is their parent. Yep. And then you've got interdependent, which is healthy interdependency between two people. And then there's codependency. So codependency is that toxic leftover stuff that is, it gets in the way and it's sneaky and it just, um, in how it kind of, and it is called enmeshment for a reason. There's entanglement that just winds up taking us places we don't want to be with our relationships. But you're right, it's so much from our childhood. And, but the thing is, is every bit of that is able to be healed. And many of us don't realize it. And you said up to 12, which seems perfectly in line. I always hear the number birth to seven. That's where the, most of the stuff is in your subconscious. What, what are your thoughts on all of that? Well, that's excellent because at the root, it actually is, uh, believe it or not, uh, conception to six years old is the heaviest. Matter of fact, long time ago, some of the classic psychological uh, grandfathers of psychology did some research, and do you know that we get our biggest imprint for our organic, systemic way to trust by, guess how old? With that one variable, just trust. Wow. Um, I'm going to say, I'm going to say five. Try two years old. Wow. And it's just, there are certain things that happen like clockwork for every single human being on this planet and the history of this planet is between zero and six. It's huge. And people say, well, I don't remember back then. Well, now you're talking about your conscious. And that's where desires are and, and so forth that we're in tune with. But it's like it's that stuff that we're not in tune with. It's like an iceberg. It's the stuff below the water level line. It's the 80% of our thinking mind is buried subconscious. Only 20% is conscious reasoning mind. Sure. And that stuff in that subconscious is what really drives us and can drive us awry. Mm. Uh, would you say, and, and we'll, we'll, 
we'll pivot from this, you know, one more point here. Cause I, 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 I'd love from your perspective, your feelings on this, but would you say that every child who is born, assuming that they're healthy are all the same. They may have a different background. Their parents may speak a different language. They may be a different color, but essentially every child who is healthy, who is born is, is just a clean slate. It's a, it's a fresh beginning, but then, then life happens around them. And then that's where internalization takes place. And that's where these things are formed now, as I learned from you, the trust thing at age two. Um, do you think that, does that sound reasonable? Well, you know, there's a big <clears throat> debate always ongoing between nature versus nurture, as we call it. And so nature is how we're born, basically, our systemic basic self. And, you know, you use the word healthy. Well, now that's a big if. But if a person has parents when they were conceived and went, and went through the womb experience that were healthy, uh, the parents were healthy mentally, emotionally, physically, interpersonally, and, and they came out <clears throat> of that womb not hyper-driven or overcompensating from then, you know, it's about 20% in my estimation, but, but then really 80% is the nurture it's the environment and zero to 12 it is so huge and so oh yeah absolutely there we have a whole lot more in common a lot of people i'll ask people that i'm seeing uh steve that uh how long do you think you've been had this problem or been this way well all my life and i, and I go oh okay so you were born this way <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and i and i've got them i know i've got them right because it's like well now let me think about that well, it came pretty early on. I said, that's not what I said. I said, well, was it when you were born? Well, probably not. Um, had a pretty decent, you know, uh, beginning there. And I go, right. So if you learned it, if you learned this maladaptive coping mechanism, stuff that's really messing with you, if you learned it, guess what you can do? You oh, can unlearn it. Right. Wow. Uh, and that's what we all need to do. <laughs> I don't, it, you know, call it a trauma whatever you want to call it. We all have, sure. you know, we've all gone through things. Um, that's right. That's, that's, that's impacted us. Uh, mm-hmm. Tell me about your book. And, and I guess that goes in line with what we're talking about here at this moment. All we, we have things that we need to heal from. Your book is called Heal Your Soul Permanently. Yes, yeah, Steve, thank you for asking. It um, I just actually been working on it. Well, I've been thinking about it and, and gearing up for it, you know, for years, but especially pretty, pretty hardcore the last couple of years, and just released it a few weeks ago. And, uh, yeah, Heal Your Soul, uh, dot, 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 permanently. And then the subtitle is Be Set Free from Depression, Anxiety, Codependency, and more. And, and you, anybody can get it on Amazon. Um, but, yeah, so it is really a solution manual. It's, a, it's not a lot of stories. It's got some, but it's not a lot of that, not a lot of fluff and narrative. It is really a how-to, easy-to-use, uh, seeker manual of, that's solution-oriented. And the first chapter is uh, I come at it from with my personal testimony so I can relate. And then we go chapter two is the reality of pain. It's, it's, you know, it's in all shapes and sizes like, you're, like you were talking about and how the mind thinks and break down that subconscious and conscious and what we can really do about it. And three is anxiety, eliminating the driver. So we really get into solutions for actually getting rid of anxiety problems. And, um, <clears throat> and that can be anywhere on the spectrum. Uh, social anxiety, it can be agoraphobia where I can't even leave the house, mm. or I've just got little problems that I deal with at work or whatever in my relationships. Chapter four, depression, eliminating the pain. And really, it is a matter of choice. That sounds kind of strange. Of course, we have different types of depression, major depression, brief reactive depression, so on. But uh, it really is at the core. If we can get down to where we're strengthening the individual so much so that with help and, and, and assistance and, and a good supportive network, a person actually can choose and feel more powerful than ever before to break through that depression. Well, John, I've had it all my life. Well, all right, are you ready for solutions? And that's, what I, that's how I work with people. I'd say, Steve, probably 75% of the people that come to me say, John, I've been to other folks. I'm so tired of this. You're my last shot. And, um, and that's a big, and then it gets into codependency 
and time and stress management and conflict resolution, a lot of it boundary setting, a lot of it's about boundaries mm. and so on. But I do have a couple of chapters um, that are just for, that are primarily, not just for, primarily for clinicians on literally how to step out the process. And people will say, especially clinicians, well, what are you talking about? If we've got this situation here, it's going to be all my life or it's going to be cyclical. And that's why I said permanently, because there are permanent answers. And um, the people that I see, the vast majority, when they get through working with me, and, and it's not like I am milk the situation, I get them taken care of as soon as possible and get them real results that um, they can truly receive simply and deeply. And, um, and so, yeah, there are techniques in the book. Even all along, it's very specific, solution-oriented for the whole purpose of not having to cycle through this again. Other things here that uh, I, I believe you might have quickly mentioned, addictions. This all ties in. You know, Many people gravitate toward, toward different substances because of the underlying situations that they're going through, right? Well, that's right. Now, it can be food addiction, sex addiction, love addiction, gambling addiction, drug addiction, nicotine. Um, you know, uh, if I, uh, like myself, I I've, I've, haven't had addictions per se. I've worked with hundreds of people that have and successfully. But, you know, I'll be honest with you, because of some stuff in my childhood, I was geared up to be quite an emotional eater. And I'm not talking about stuff in your feelings. A lot of us do that, but that's a long part of the process, too. But uh, so I, you know, I have to battle sweets. I mean, bad. And so I'm, I'm, I'm doing pretty well right now. But I do have to, I have to walk that out and not when I get super stressed or teed off or I get in a kind of a no-win situation. I've got my techniques and I can work through it. But if I'm really consumed with it coming at me from a lot of different angles and it's super heavy stuff, I will tend to really, really want certain sweets. And if somebody <laughs> if somebody brings it up and says, would you like a so-and-so, I immediately go to mouthwatering because I just, oh, my Lord. And so uh, anyway, yeah. And, and I've heard that from other people too, that there's yeah. just something. I want to ask you, uh, before we run out of time, did you always have a fascination with the mind? Well, that's a good question. I, um, I really, I, I was going to be and geared up to be and studied uh, engineering, physics, and outer space stuff, and actually was getting finishing my engineering degree. And so I spent six years doing that. And then right as I was finishing my engineering degree at A&M, um, I had a huge uh, experience, a uh, life epiphany that rerouted everything. Now, I've always been more of a deep thinker and deep feeler, and so I've always been fascinated with it. But when that thing happened, uh, to me, it radically altered my universe, and I lost all desire for engineering, and I knew I had to see people healed. And so that, de and that healing was like not um, superficial uh, Band-Aid therapy or fruit picking from a tree. It was really deeper, solid, forever healing that I wanted to find the ways to make sure people can grab a hold of. And that happens in your book. Um, just even looking at some of the, the things that the, the book talks about, um, right down to how to start over with a truly healed you. Uh, fantastic. Uh, and I can, I'll laser this, I can relate to a lot of this because I've done the work on myself with, with people around me, support coaches, uh, hypnotherapists and all of that. What a difference when you look back to maybe the way you acted toward versus the way you act now after learning about all of this. Um, what are some of the things that you hear from people that you work with? John, I just wished that I could have heard about this 20, 30, 40 years ago. Mm. Where were you then? You know, yeah. <laughs> and I'm going, I know, right? I know. And then, and then, you know, folks will say, I just, I guess, is not just the stigma of really going for help, but once I got past that, I was concerned about maybe being a little afraid of going deeper and or would it really work? And I don't have that kind of money, so it's like, you know, is this thing going to drag out and take years and years and years? Or, you know, is there something I can wrap my mind around, my hands around, and feel like 
I've got comforting, strengthening arms around me, maybe even supernaturally or whatever. Sure. But is there stuff that supports and strengthens and encourages me, and can I make that an inside happening thing? I love it. Uh, the book, available now on Amazon, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. I've actually got a hardback and paperback and uh, ebook, I think, and I'm fixing to go for um, the audio book pretty soon. I, it's it, we need it. <laughs> we do. Uh, all of yeah. us need this book because we're all dealing with things. And the I think the one of the bigger challenges is, or it, most of us don't even know that we are dealing with something. You think that well, life is okay. Why do I react that way in those situations? Nah, I'm not really sure. And we kind of put it to the side. But once you really take some soul searching, take some time, even a couple of minutes to think about it. Um, I find that you can realize that there is more out there. I could be a better person for myself, for others. Once I, I confront these things that I need to be healed from, uh, and, uh, we're on the same page. Thank you for, for fortifying the fact that uh, I've often heard it comes from your childhood. Um, and, and two, I got to wrap my arms around that one in terms of the trust thing. Um, final thought on that. Cause I find it very intriguing do you think that many of us should think back to when we were two, if we can even get back that far and see what was life like, and then kind of, kind of think about the the level of trust in our life now? Well, I, I, good question, Steve. Again, I I think that um, folks, I don't know about two, because a lot of people really ha- would have trouble going back that far. Although mm-hmm. if they can, there are ways to get there, and it would be awesome. But at least to think about early to. Um, middle uh, or later even uh, childhood and go, what was the environment like, yeah. you know? What, what, what were my care, principal caregivers like? And how it winds up is we wind up with, in the subconscious, triggerability. If we don't get it healed, it'll go all the way through our life, no matter what, and we will still have this hypervigilance, sensitivities, or triggerability, and that's a, that's a telltale sign. Have you ever heard, final question here, because now I'm intrigued, have you ever heard that many times when you try to go back to your earliest memory, it's usually a negative memory, when we talk about trying to think back to maybe when you were two, it's a negative memory because that's your mind's way, or maybe your subconscious, of protecting you, of protecting you from that's something. A, that, that is fantastic. That is absolutely right, because it makes a deeper imprint. Yes. It, it's it's fear based. It's trauma based. It's and so that imprint goes deeper than the typical positive stuff. And that's why in one of the chapters we go. I tell people how to do a life script and walk back in there, discover their parts, do whatever they've got to do, and they will. They can find it. It's amazing how if with focus, with real focus, a person can tap into those rocks and pebbles even as we sang the river, and get them taken care of. Website is johncarneycoaching.com, C-A-R-N-E-Y, John, J-O-H-N, carneycoaching.com. Details are on the book. And also, John, are you able to to work with somebody on a life coaching level uh, virtually? Well, yes, Steve. That's that's actually what I do, no matter where they are, wherever in the world. Uh, and they just need to give me a call. We can, I can answer a few of their initial questions. And we simply do it over the computer through Zoom. Love it. I feel like I'm talking to an educated friend. <laughs> I really do. Um, <laughs> and learned so much today. Uh, and even just things that backed up that I always wondered about. Uh, fantastic book. Thank you for sharing it. Thank you for being here today. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Steve. We'll be right back. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Adopt U.S. Kids presents Multiple Choice Parenting. Your daughter just had her first breakup. Do you A, put yourself in her shoes? How could he do this to you? And for Sheila, she she has split ends. B, console her. Oh, sweetie, this is going to happen a lot. Four, maybe five more times before you get married. C, take charge. Got to get this all straightened out. Keep a little talking to, man to man, mano a mano. Hey, Steve. Is now a good time? No? Okay, no problem. Bye. Or D, help her find a new boyfriend. 
I know a great place to meet boys. The internet. Nice, single, boys. Never mind. How about some ice cream? As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. For more information on how you can adopt, visit AdoptUSKids.org. A public service announcement from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt U.S. Kids, and the Ad Council.